The Watchtower wants its followers to be stupid and dependent on them. Now this might sound intense, but a stupid and dependent person is the opposite of an independent thinker. The Watchtower continually and consistently has not only discouraged independent thinking, but has often equated it with being a sinful person, on the wrong path, on the road to destruction, inspired by Satan. Today, we're going to jump into the Watchtower Online Library and take a look at independent thinking and a few articles written by the Watchtower on the subject. Now, the Watchtower can't have it both ways. On one hand, independent thinking is almost like being the sinful human being. But on the other hand, God commands his followers to love him with all of their mind. So in this video, by the end, I hope that you can see how the Watchtower is off track and not only off track, but the only reason why they're promoting this idea is so that you don't question them. Now, every day on the Watchtower Online Library, they have a daily scripture. In Christendom, we call these devos. So I'm just gonna call it the Watchtower Devo for February 27th. Let's jump into it. Tuesday, February 27th. Listen and learn to fear Jehovah your God, Deuteronomy 31, 13. When the Israelites entered the promised land, they settled over a wide area. Israelites living in one area could easily have lost interest in the welfare of fellow Israelites living in other parts of the country. But Jehovah arranged for the Israelites to gather together on various occasions to hear his written word read and explained. Imagine how a faithful Israelite must have felt as he arrived in Jerusalem and saw perhaps millions of his fellow worshipers from every part of the country. Jehovah thereby helped his people to remain united. Later, when the Christian congregation was formed, it was made up of men and women who spoke many languages and who were from many social and economic backgrounds, but they were united in worship of the true God. Those who became believers could understand God's word only with the aid of fellow worshipers and by meeting together with them. Acts 2, 42, Acts 8, 30 through 31. Now the key here is the last sentence. Those who became believers could understand God's word only with the aid of fellow worshipers and by meeting together with them. Now, this is not a biblical statement. In John chapter 14, Jesus talks about how he will send another helper, another advocate. And this is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth who dwells in believers. And the Holy Spirit will teach them all things. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper so that he may be with you forever. The helper is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of all that I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit's job is not only to teach believers, but actually to remind them of Jesus's words, to testify of Jesus. Now, this might be a shock to a Jehovah's Witness because it's not about an organization. Jesus never talked about an organization or joining an organization. He always pointed back to himself, that if you believe in him, you have eternal life. So the Holy Spirit's job is to point back to Jesus. Why? Because he is the center of salvation. He is salvation. So here we have a verse that clearly contradicts the Watchtower. One of the ways that you can understand the Bible is by being a believer, having the Holy Spirit dwell within you. And as you read the word, he will teach you these things. He will point you to Jesus. Now the verses that the Watchtower has quoted here don't say anything about how you need to be dependent on an organization in order to understand the Bible. Acts 2 is just simply saying, hey, look, they gathered. It was the early church. This is what's going on. It's not saying that you must submit yourself to the faithful and discreet slave and everything that they teach and do, and you shouldn't question, you shouldn't think, and you shouldn't be an independent thinker. 
And in Acts 8, as I unpacked in one of my most recent videos about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, this is an evangelistic moment where Philip witnessed, preached the gospel to somebody, and then he left him. He didn't stay with him. He didn't have a 50-week Bible study with the Ethiopian eunuch. He preached Jesus to him. The Ethiopian eunuch gets baptized, and then Philip is snatched away and goes to another town and preaches the gospel. So the Watchtower really should stop using this verse to say that, look, you can't understand the Bible yourself. You need them. Now, when I opened up my Watchtower online library, I typed in independent thinking, and I found a couple interesting articles that I wanted to share with you. So here we go. So we are in Armed for the Fight Against Wicked Spirits, the Watchtower Announcing Jehovah's Kingdom, 1983. And there are a couple of categories here. We have fight against materialistic desires, fight against sexual immorality, and then fight against independent thinking. So here we have the Watchtower equating independent thinking with being sexually immoral and a materialistic human being. All right. How has Jehovah always guided his people? How is independent thinking manifested by some persons? And I don't want to hear that this is 1983 and we shouldn't use it. This is God's channel. It doesn't matter how old it is. It's okay. <laughs> As we study the Bible, we learn that Jehovah has always guided his servants in an organized way. This here is a fallacy of equivocation. So basically they're saying organized way and then in organized way they make you think organization. It means two different things but they're uh, equating it to be the same thing. And just as in the first century there was only one true Christian organization, so today Jehovah is using only one organization. Yet there are some who point out that the organization has had to make adjustments before and so they argue, this shows that we have to make up our own mind on what to believe. This is independent thinking. Why is this so dangerous? So here, what is basically happening is that the Watchtower during this time has already made a number of false predictions, false prophecies, adjusted teachings, meanwhile claiming to be the only channel of truth, claiming to be God's organization, his mouthpiece. They've claimed to be a prophet at this point as well. And people are picking up on this. And so logically, they're like, well, I guess I'm going to have to figure out what to believe. I'm going to have to figure it out for myself. Now, the Watchtower calls this dangerous. They call it dangerous to make up your own mind on what to believe. This whole paragraph is essentially saying, it doesn't matter if we have false prophesied, changed our doctrines, have gotten it wrong a million times. All you need to do is fight against any type of independent thinking, any type of doubts. Now, instead of addressing the concerns about the adjustments, the false prophecies, the predicted dates, the changed doctrines, the Watchtower is gaslighting its members. What is gaslighting? It is used to distort reality. And so it's going to present a altered version of events, history, or teaching. And it it really causes the members to question their own understanding. And so here they're blaming their members for becoming independent thinkers, which is equated to a sinful human being, instead of actually addressing their concerns. Of what is independent thinking and evidence? What will help us to avoid placing our own views ahead of the organization's? What first century example is it well for us to follow? Such thinking is an evidence of pride. And the Bible says pride is before a crash and a haughty spirit before stumbling. If we get to thinking that we know better than the organization, we should ask ourselves, where did we learn Bible truth in the first place? Would we know the way of the truth if it had not been for guidance from the organization? Really? Can we get along without the direction of God's organization? 
No, we cannot. This statement is so arrogant, and I hope that I don't have to explain why it is. To say that everything that you know about the Bible is because of them is pride, is prideful. The irony is so thick in this statement that it's unbelievable that people don't see it. Remember what John 14 says. John 14 speaks of the helper. And what does the helper do? The helper helps. The helper teaches you all things and testifies of Jesus, speaks of Jesus. So on one hand, you have the watchtower saying, look, everything you know is because of us. Why would you question us? Why would you put your needs before our needs? Why would you put your thinking before our thinking? This is almost... Um, putting them on the same level as Jehovah, putting them on the same level as God. But the main point here is also that they equate it with being a sinful person, with being a prideful, haughty spirit, all these bad things listed in in Proverbs. Moving on to paragraph 21. How only can we win in our fight? What must we never forget? And so what kind of life do we now need to lead? When we consider the mighty spirit forces who are fighting against us, we must acknowledge that on our own, we cannot possibly win. Yet with God's backing and with the help and support of his organization, our worldwide association of brothers, we cannot lose. However, we must never forget that we are in a spiritual war and that wartime is no time to be relaxing, enjoying only leisure and the pleasures of life. Rather, it is the time for vigorous training, alertness, and self-sacrifice. The enemy has been able to get some from among us to relax their guard, and these have become battle casualties. May this never happen to us. It will not if we keep on the complete suit of armor from God and stand firm against the crafty acts of the devil. So basically, if you question the organization, um, not only are you a sinful person, but you're going to be a battle casualty if you go down the path of independent thinking. Um, This is war here, a battle over your mind. And if you question the organization, then you are on the wrong side of that battle. All right, now we're gonna take a look at a more recent article from 2006 titled, Seeking Righteousness Will Protect Us. So remember, seeking righteousness will protect us. What does it mean to seek righteousness? Within Watchtower, it means to submit yourself to the faithful, discreet slave. It has nothing to do with Jesus. It has nothing to do with God. It's about keeping close to the organization. This is really how you seek righteousness. This is really how you stay safe. Beware of an independent spirit. What wrong spirit was manifested by Eve and by some in Paul's day? And even Satan successfully appealed to Eve's selfish desire for independence. Eve wanted to make her own decisions about right and wrong. In the first century, some in the Corinthian congregation had a similar independent spirit. They thought they knew better than Paul, and he sarcastically called them superfine apostles. How can we avoid developing an independent spirit? In the world today, many are headstrong, puffed up with pride, and some Christians have been influenced by that way of thinking. Some have become opposers of the truth. What's an opposer of the truth? An opposer of the truth is anybody who disagrees with the watchtower. Nothing about Jesus. When it comes to pure worship, it is vital that we look to Jehovah for direction and cooperate with the faithful and discreet slave and the congregation of elders. That is a way to seek righteousness and it protects us from developing an independent spirit. The congregation of the anointed is a pillar and support of the truth. Jehovah has provided it to protect and guide us. Recognizing its vital role will help us to do nothing of egotism as we humbly submit to Jehovah's righteous will. Now, I hope that you can see from this paragraph that Jehovah's will is the same thing as submitting or cooperating with the faithful and discreet slave, with God's organization. 
There is nothing here about having a relationship with Jesus, abiding in Christ, or even allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you because he dwells in you. And those verses that I shared earlier uh, show a personality, show that the Holy Spirit actually is a person, not just this magic active force. And so here we have this discouragement of don't even think about thinking independently because you're basically like Eve who sinned in the Garden of Eden. If you think about thinking independently, look to not, they'll say Jehovah, but you have to look to the organization. So if those thoughts of independence start to creep in, who are you looking to? Faithful and discreet slave. The Watchtower does such a good job of presenting itself as a Christian religion, when in reality, it's a business. It's a business that gets customers to promote their product, which is a message of hope. That's the product that they're promoting. And people buy into it and then continue to propagate that. This has nothing to do with Christ, his salvation, having eternal life, having the freedom to have a relationship with Jesus, and then it being this authentic and natural thing that we see in the New Testament. Instead, we see it's all about the business. It's all about the organization. It's all about maintaining that reputation. And if you start to question, to direct your thoughts back to the organization. Now we're gonna take a look at an article from 2008. Accept Jehovah's authority. Guard against an independent spirit. What is one area in which we need to guard against an independent spirit? In accepting Jehovah's authority, we need to guard against an independent spirit. A haughty attitude can cause us to feel that we do not need guidance from anyone. For example, we might resist counsel given by those taking the lead among God's people. God has established an arrangement by which a faithful and discreet slave class provides spiritual food at the proper time. We should humbly recognize that this is the way Jehovah is caring for his people. Be like the faithful apostles. When some disciples were stumbled, Jesus asked the apostles, You do not want to go also, do you? Peter replied, Lord, whom shall we go away to? You have sayings of eternal life. So how do you guard against an independent spirit? First, it needs to be argued that being independent is wrong, which they haven't done. But the independence here is always geared towards like thinking on your own, questioning, using your mind, reasoning, asking yourself, hey, wait, why are there so many changes in the organization if it's God's organization? Anything like that is dangerous. It's a satanic spirit, the same spirit that inspired Eve to sin in the garden. Um, basically, Satan's talking to you if you're trying to think independently. So here we see a couple of things. We see that you need to just accept how it is. How is it? What is Jehovah's arrangement? It's the faithful and discreet, the faithful and discreet slave class is giving you the guidance you need. Don't be independent. Don't think independently at all. Just follow their guidance. And if you don't, you're gonna develop a haughty spirit, which is dangerous. It's basically the same spirit that deceived Eve in the garden. You're inspired by Satan. If you think you're gonna think independently. What's also crazy about this paragraph is that they put themselves on the same level of Jesus. In John chapter six, Peter tells Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. He doesn't say, hey, where should we go? What's the current organization? Where do I need to become a member of? It was about a person because he knew that it was about following Jesus. It was not about following an organization or submitting yourself to a particular class, a faithful and discreet slave class. It was only about Christ because he was the center of salvation. We're going to end on an article from 1973. So we've hopped around a little bit here, but now we're going back in time to 1973. Rights or duties, which? Paragraph 13. Rather than be independent-minded, what should we do now and why? Should we cause a stir in the congregation or become independent-minded and withdraw even a little from full cooperation with the congregation now? 
Rather, as we see the storm clouds of the Great Tribulation getting darker and the climate of this world more chilling, we should draw closer to the Christian congregation, closer and closer together in the warmth of love. We should be extra careful of our attitude and we should stand with God. The Apostle Peter expresses this need very strongly when he says, if the righteous man is being saved with difficulty, where will the ungodly man and the sinner make a showing? So here we see the opposite of being independent-minded is being in an echo chamber, is being surrounded by only people that you agree with. Because if you're not surrounded by these people that you agree with, who all believe the same things, all teach the same things, what's going to be what's going to happen, you're going to be a casualty. You are going to become like those other sinful brothers who have lost their way. So the language in this paragraph is really similar to an article that I just read. It's from May of this year, the Watchtower Study Edition. And I just want to compare the two for you here. Rather, as we see the storm clouds of the Great Tribulation getting darker and the climate of this world more chilling, we should draw closer to the Christian organization. And then from May of this year, the article is titled, Let Love Motivate You to Keep Preaching. And if you read 14 and 15, we're talking about why we should continue to, or they should continue to preach the good news. Um, but here we have, at the same time, we must keep sounding the warning. People need to know that the end of this wicked system of things is rapidly approaching. So the way that the Watchtower keeps its members hooked is a sense of urgency. The end is near. The end is near. Like, what is near? What is soon? We don't know, but the end is near. You need to keep preaching. You need to stay close to the congregation. Don't question. Don't think independently. You're going to cause a ruckus in the congregation. You're going to be like Eve. You're going to be a sinful person. Um, you are not going to be on the path of righteousness. You are not seeking Jehovah's will. You are not following Jesus if you even think about thinking. So these type of articles really keep an individual from ever questioning, um, ever thinking outside of the box. And Jehovah's Witnesses, they like to bash all the denominations, but really at the end of the day, denominations are a result of a different way of thinking and seeing something that is not completely black and white in scripture. And that is okay because Christians can unite under uh, the core issues and disagree on peripheral issues. I can fellowship or go to a Christian conference or concert with other Christians and worship God because we are united under Christ and his salvation and the main things, the things that the Bible is, are very, the things in the Bible that are very clear. And we can disagree on other things and that's okay because God wants us to love him with all of our mind, soul, strength, spirit, and to renew our mind. And so here we have this command to love God with our mind. And so if you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this, I would really encourage you and ask you, are you loving him with your mind? Are you blindly submitting and just accepting Jehovah's arrangement? It is what it is. And I'm going to just follow this group of men who are telling me everything to believe. So if you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this, I want to encourage you to not check your brain at the door but to love God with all of your mind, to renew your mind. And we can do this by independent thinking, that the watchtower is wrong. You're not a sinful person. You're not an evil person for asking questions that God has given you a mind to use and he expects you to do it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Give this video a big thumbs up and let me know your thoughts or other quotes that you have found where the Watchtower has discouraged independent thinking and has equated it to being a sinful individual.